I made a post the other day about how I am deeply integrating Emacs into my window manager, which is Hyperland. So much so that Emacs has become my entire computing environment. It's my computer now. <laughs> Since then, the post has actually gone on to Hacker News and there's been some lively conversation about uh, Emacs and how I use it and some questions and people actually wanted to see a video about it. So here is the video. I'm going to switch over to my screen now and kind of show you how I do things in my environment and how I have integrated Emacs so much so that it doesn't really matter if Emacs is on my screen, I can still grab it and interact with it, send a bunch of different key presses to it. Let's get into it. I'm just gonna show you how this works. Switch over to my monitor here. Here's the blog post that I made about how I'm integrating Emacs into Hyperline. You can go read it on my blog. I'm just gonna link it in the show notes, but the, Big question a lot of people are immediately gonna say is why aren't you using EXWM? And the reason behind that is twofold. One is that Wayland kind of seems to be the direction that window management on Linux is going. Don't shoot the messenger on that, but it does seem to be that Wayland is the direction that things are going. That's not to say that X11 isn't, there's no merit to it or that it's not a good way of doing window management. It's just that I think that Wayland is where things are kind of moving. So Hyperland is in, inevitably a, a Wayland manager. The second thing too is that Emacs is single threaded. And as soon as you use Emacs as your window manager, you run the risk of things hanging pretty drastically when you're doing high compute uh, activities. Even stuff such as updating your RSS feed or something like that causes Emacs to hang. And I don't want my window manager to hang. That's the only other reason that I'm not using EXWN, but that's probably, the second issue is probably fixable in optimizations of your Emacs uh, configuration. I'm not there yet, but there has been people that have said, hey, that's a little bit of an overstated worry. It's never happened to me. Or there's also people on the other side that are saying, yeah, it's, it's something that actually drove me away from EXWN. So take that with a grain of salt. I'll talk about how I'm integrating Emacs into Hyperland, at least for this post. The very first thing that kind of changed for me is that I wrote a little Go script that allows me to launch all of my different uh, key binds from wherever in my system. So that is my Emacs launcher.go here, and that is uh, my Go file that allows me to make system calls from anywhere in the system. And then I just add my uh, Hyperland keybinds directly to this script and things are very quick. This has sped up my workflow by probably about 10x. It, it, no word of a lie, I was previously using a bash script for each and every system call and it was, uh, it, it was a little bit slow to say the least. Let's say previously I wanted to activate these scripts and I could do this from anywhere in my window manager. The thing is, is let's say I was on a different screen here, the Hacker News article, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but I wanted to copy this text, for example, and I hit Control Shift C, that actually brings me to a capture buffer in Emacs instantaneously. Previously, this was taking a little bit of time. It felt a little bit laggy. So I this Go script has actually sped things up drastically. I'm gonna just close out of that. Now, in the article, I kind of talk about how I launch Emacs. I don't launch Emacs very frequently, it, only when I really, really have to. It is loaded on system boot. So other than that, I don't really touch that command, but it's there in case I do need it. One thing I'll mention is that I'm using Emacs client for everything in this setup. I am not using any uh, other instances of Emacs. I am literally making calls directly to the one instance that is opened on workspace number one. Workspace number one is Emacs only ever. I can open a terminal very easily by pressing Alt E. There's a terminal right there in VTerm and that actually allows me to get into Emacs anywhere on my system. You'll note that I'm on workspace number two in the top left here. Workspace number one is where Emacs lives. This is something that I've wanted to talk about for some time and actually will make a video about it. I've actually created a universal launcher for Emacs. This replaces Rofi or any of those launchers that you would have on Mac, for example. I don't use those anymore, really. I have Rofi as a fallback. I can still use it if need be, but generally I use this 95% of the time. It's just a, I don't know, 700 line uh, package that I, kind of vibe coded and it actually allows me to launch 
any app in my system, do bookmark searches, use it for browsing the web. Uh, I'll do a little demo on it really quickly. I'll do an actual dedicated video on it in the future. But I hit Alt space, I'm brought back to Emacs in workspace number one. And let's say I want to SSH into my phone, for example. So the SSH into my phone and there's Termux, there I am. So <laughs> that's kind of fun. I can use it to SSH in uh, an Emacs paint. I can do other stuff like, let's say I want to search the web, the web, and I can pick one of various uh, documentation or search engine providers. So let's say I want to use, uh, I don't even know, the uh, Emacs docs to search the web. <laughs> uh, you could do that. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have bookmarks. So let's say I want to go to uh, the dot files of Henrik Listener, who is the creator of Doom Emacs and also a Nix guy. There they are right there. I can, and I also save bookmarks pretty frequently with control shift uh, and then B in here. What else can I do? There's, uh, there's various things that I built into this. I can go to previous files. This is a file that I'm working on right here. It's saved into my system. Uh, I can look at my to-dos. I can do a number of different things. There's a calculator built into it. I'll do a, a more deep video on it a little bit later, but it's, uh, it's kind of nice to say the least. <laughs> I, I've already touched on this one a little bit, but I captured org mode anywhere in my system. So I could be on any workspace and I can save notes, calendar items, uh, to-dos, ideas, notes, whatever. I access those notes with uh, a very quick key bind right here. So if I need to get into my notes super quickly from anywhere in the system, can do it right here. You'll note that all of the uh, key binds are essentially the hyperland format. So bind and then the uh, modifier keys, the uh, alphabetical key, and then it ex executes the script that we have written in the Go file. Uh, one thing I'll note about the Go file too is you obviously have to compile it as it's a Go file. So you just compile it to whatever you need it to be. You uh, allow it to be an executable and then you can run it anywhere in your system. Uh, calendar and org agenda, same thing. Super quick key binds that go to my calendar of my org agenda. I won't go into them just because they're a little bit, there's private stuff in there. Same thing with my password manager. So I can actually access my password manager from anywhere in the system. So generally Firefox is on workspace number two. Workspace number one is Emacs. I hit Alt P, it brings up a password store buffer and I just go in there and pick out my passwords super quickly and enter them into the browser if need be. File browsing, I use Dervish for all of my file browsing. So I can hit Alt F and that actually brings me up into my uh, Dervish uh, screen. So I can go into like my photos, but whatever. It's it's super nice. And people ask maybe like, why not Derhead? Well, I, I just like Dervish for like the image preview so you can get like cool images and stuff like that. It's whatever. It's, uh, it's very similar to like uh, Yazzy or uh, Ranger in the terminal. You know what else? I've already touched on bookmarks a little bit too, so I can save them with a capture and then I can actually pull them up with a uh, quick keybind to see bookmarks anywhere in the system. And then of course, email. I use MU4E, it's the greatest email client of all time. It's, it's, it's pretty good, I do like it. But one of the things that I built in is actually, let's say I want to email somebody. So there's an email link here on my page. I can actually just pull up my email right here and just write an email super quickly, send it and be back to what I was doing before. I've built my feed reader into Emacs with Lfeed. So uh, Control Alt Z brings up my feed reader and I can go see all of the various uh, feeds that are going on. See if my, uh, see if my uh, post is up here. There you go. How I'm deeply integrating Emacs. There's that too. Music playing. People were like, why do you play music in Emacs? Like it's such a distraction. And to be honest with you, I think it's actually less of a distraction than it would be to switch to like a, a GUI client like Spotify or something like that. You have less distractions. You can actually just see the music, uh, the titles of the songs that you wanna play. And that's easily built in uh, with M's. And then finally, uh, there's this Thanos type, which is the Wayland version of Emacs anywhere uh, that you can literally just pull up an Emacs buffer and edit text right here and just say, this is a new URL, control C, control C, and you can actually just go to it like that.
Sometimes it doesn't type the whole thing, but it's probably, it's probably a skill issue on my side. The question is, will I use EXWM? Maybe. I think that there's truly a lot that you can build into Hyperland and Wayland for Emacs. One of the comments on Reddit was actually like talking about how you could do first in, first out and execute uh, keyboard macros on the Emacs side and then integrate that into Hyperland and use Hyperland almost as the client where Emacs essentially controls Hyperland. It's an interesting idea. I, I'd have to look into it. Something that I'll think about in the future uh, for my integrations. What I'll do is I'll even actually reply to some of the comments on the Hacker News uh, thread in this video because there were some really, really good comments and I figure why not just do a video about it. One of the comments I made in the article is about how Emacs allows you to kind of just create. It gets out of your way once it's become this instrument that you just know how to use. And I think that this is a really good comment. I think this is a fallacy. If you approach the question of how these people achieve the things that they do with a bias towards tooling, then you'll come to the conclusion that it plays a big role in their success. In reality, many of these folks start with a very strong drive to achieve something and then the rest sort of follows. If you want to be a world-class musician, start practicing an instrument, ideally fall in love with music. The rigorous and meticulous ridiculous practice routine comes later. In other words, you can have the world's best tooling that gets out of the way, but you're still as unmotivated to do anything as before. I do 100% agree with this art, this, uh, this post, and it's one of the Linux holistic issues that you can run into. It's a trap that you can run into by using Linux. You can over optimize everything and get no real work done. And that is 100% the truth and happens all the time. It's happened to me in the past. It probably still happens to me today. But one of the things that I kind of I'm trying to say here is that Emacs allows you to take repetitive tasks and just automate them. So if there's something that I find myself doing continually, I write a e-list function for it and it gets out of my way in the future. It saves me minutes and sometimes even hours at a time. Let's say I'm posting in my blog, I've written a script to automatically update all the caddy file and update the TLS and everything as I deploy blog posts. That saves me minutes, minutes every single time I post something. It's kind of like the CI CD question. It's like, do I want to build this into a pipeline where that is just automated? And I mean, I think at a certain point, you do want to build those things in. With Emacs, you can really create uh, snippets that just make your life super easy. You're programming, you write a snippet for something that you write continually all the time, and it's, it's there for you in the future. And I think this is a really good comment because the, the poster makes misguided impression that tooling is before success is the correct order. And I, I fully agree with that. I think that you should really pursue something. And then the tooling kind of comes in as you build. You don't need a $10,000 guitar to play guitar well. You need a $100 guitar to start learning. And then from there, you can start playing at whatever level you, you ever want to go to. Emacs is kind of that tool. It, it meets you at the beginning and there is this learning curve, but it's not a learning curve. It's more so of a, a black hole. It can go on forever. It, it follows you throughout your entire journey and it meets you where you need to be met. There's no other tool that even comes close to that. I, I know that people are going to be like NeoVim, Vim, blah, 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 blah. You have to use the environment to understand what I'm talking about here. And it's, it's, it's pretty insane, the things you can do. This is an interesting comment. Somebody uses his phone to um, make captures in org mode and then just goes through. I like that. That's an interesting idea. I'm generally not around my phone though. I throw my phone in a different room when I'm on the computer. So, uh, but something that you could do while you're not at the computer. This I found was a really interesting comment about how somebody uses uh, Emacs for, uh, I think they're heart of sight. There, there's this tooling that's built into Emacs that actually allows them to just do the work that they need to do on a computer. It's very interesting. The more I learn about Emacs, the more I feel we took the wrong fork on the road in terms of the desktop metaphor decades ago. This is an interesting comment because I do honestly believe, and I actually replied to it, that we could have had a totally integrated computing experience. Emacs is the closest thing to that. You have this ability to bring everything into one place and have unified key binds and context that is holistic. I think this is an interesting comment. There's a pretty good thread about it on here as well. Another comment is Emacs is great for people who are fine. 
uh, tinkering with their tools and adjusting them for their needs and tastes. Emacs improves my quality of life quite a bit. A lot of people hate that. They want a tool that has uh, all relevant that has all irrelevant to their task front and center, all irrelevant, invisible, or non-existent, and zero options to tinker with. It should just work and preferably never change. Uh, yeah, the thing that I agree with here is that honestly, like, there, Emacs is for a certain kind of person, right? Like, it's not going to be for everybody that just want to like do work. But I kind of replied with, if you want to build a tool chest over the years, Emacs is the right place to do it because it follows you through your learning and your abilities and everything as you grow as a programmer, as somebody that that manipulates text on a daily basis, it's it's there for you. And it will always meet you at your level. That's kind of the difference. Another good question was like, do you start with a opinionated distro like Doom or Space Max, or do you start with vanilla? And I think that you can do either. I think that there's validity to the Doom Space Max side of things. And to say that Doom is not like, a really interesting project in that there's been so many uh, optimizations that have already been built into it from day one. That's that's kind of really cool to see as well. I think that you could go the vanilla route and then just use Doom on the side. You can actually use multiple Emacs configurations at the same time. You could have a vanilla and a Doom and just see like what's possible in the Doom and build your vanilla as you, as you grow. I use Doom Emacs and I just haven't had time to do a vanilla config. And honestly, all of the uh, the defaults are pretty solid. I've built a 2000 line config on top of Doom and I've probably under optimized it, but there's a lot that I could just take into a vanilla config at some point in the future. There's a couple comments about EXWM and how it uh, actually doesn't really, it, my, my worries are unmerited. I think they're super interesting. And I actually asked like, hey, like, how can I do this? How can I optimize my config in the future so that I could integrate into EXWM? So interesting comment here as well. And for those that are unfamiliar with EXWM, it actually takes Emacs and brings it as the window manager for your entire system. So everything becomes Emacs buffer. You have the ability to uh, hit meta X anywhere in your system and have all your Emacs commands and everything holistically through your entire computer. That's super interesting to me. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Another comment about the uh, the axe sharpening, if you will. But if part of our axe sharpening is listening to music, reading email, catching up with your feeds and so on, then perhaps we need to take a step back and ask if we're invading our work thought space with boondoggles. Interesting comment. And I think there's validity to it as well. The thing that I would say is that, let's say I get an email. I don't have to context switch away from what I'm doing. Let's say I want to read the email in the future. I can just mark it as a to-do in Emacs and get back to the work that I was doing, or there's a something I need to execute on in that email, I can make a to-do in that and just link. Everything's linked. Everything's super easy to access. And I'll go back to the music comment for a second. It's nice to have your music in one place that you don't have to go out and get distracted with like pretty album covers and stuff like that. You can just have your music in one computing environment. You don't have to go outside to to do anything for it. I keep hearing about Emacs and how awesome it is. There is a good resource uh, for beginners. I would say Mastering Emacs, uh, which is a book. System Crafters is a great channel. Uh, I'm doing some content, but I'm, I'm not there yet. System Crafters is really, really good. Um, there's a couple others. I'll, I'll think about them and post them in the show notes. Yeah, Mastering Emacs has come up quite a bit in this thread here. So why is he using Nix when there is Emacs? Uh, good question. Probably probably shouldn't even be using a, uh, a Linux distribution at all. Should just boot into Emacs directly. <laughs> and this, this comment is, this may sound strange, but I actually think we need just one editor. There is one editor, Emacs. Just kidding. You can bring Vim into Emacs with Evo mode. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. Um, he's talking about something called Bluefish. I'm unfamiliar, so I won't comment on that. But there are, I would say that there is one editor and it is Emacs. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If this kind of content, free and open source software, philosophy, first principles and computing and all that sort of thing interests you, feel free to stick around and subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to support the channel, I have some links down in the show notes. Feel free if you're so inclined. And I also do web app development and uh, programming. So if you have any projects that you're working on and want some help with, feel free to reach out via email. As always, God bless. We will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye now.